Welcome to the Quest Forums channel. I've been asked a good question on an issue where I think uh, Christians have been missing the mark by a good bit over the past few generations. Uh, someone asks, I've been told by quite a few people that God is alright with them getting divorced because he wants them to be happy. And are they right? Is that what God wants? And I, that is a very good question. And in fact, that actually raises two issues. Uh, the first one, obviously, is on divorce itself whether divorce is right or wrong. And if these people are talking about God, it doesn't necessarily mean they're Christians, but that's probably in our culture, the tradition that they're coming out of. And so hopefully the Bible would have some pull with them. Now, I'm not going to dive into this quite as deep as I will in the article, but there's a number of places in the Bible that talk about divorce, and God in those places takes a very negative view of it. You have Matthew chapter 19 where Jesus is asked about divorce. And he says that divorce was provided for in the Old Testament law, not because it was something God wanted, but because he knew that people can be abusive. And so there were protections put in place to keep people from having their lives totally destroyed by divorce. But that was not God's plan. God's purpose from the beginning was that one life should be created from two people. And that's why Jesus says in verse 6, what God has joined together, let no one separate. This follows off the same sentiment appearing in Malachi chapter 2 in the Old Testament, and where God speaks and talks about how divorce is an evil. It's a treachery against a spouse, but it's also a treachery against him, because his purpose for marriage, again, was one life from two people. Also, that it would be the creation of the family so that godly children could be raised. Uh, divorce, therefore, is an act of hatred against God, and so God despises it. He doesn't condone it. And then also Ephesians chapter 5. Now, that passage doesn't mention divorce uh, directly, but it can be made to apply, because the passage from verses 21 to 23 is about Christian marriage, what that's supposed to look like, and especially the fact that it, from the beginning, was intended to reflect the relationship that exists between Christ and the church. So, by extension, divorce is an attack not just on the family, as God's created it uh, on earth, but also against the plan of salvation. You put all these things together, there are more examples too, and you just know that you know, divorce is not something that God wants for people. That it is not his desire that people give up on their marriages. Now, you can talk about the exceptions. And the exceptions in the Bible, Jesus talks about adultery. And says that if someone is unfaithful in their marriage, and then their spouse does have the right to divorce them. But divorce for any other reason is actually adultery itself if you get remarried. He's very much against it. Uh, Paul expands that a bit in 1 Corinthians. He talks about abandonment, saying that if someone leaves their spouse, that then they're free of them. Because what that amounts to is basically that they've died. Now, later thinkers, uh, we're obviously not apostles, <laughs> and these people are not God to speak for them, but it does seem reasonable to me, it seems reasonable to a lot of people, to also include abuse, uh, to see that as a form of abandonment. Because if you're in a situation that is actually dangerous, then you need to leave it. But you having to leave is not you abandoning that person, it's actually them abandoning you. And so that's another thing that's been included as an exception for divorce. But those things are not just exceptions because they're the only things that the Bible leaves room for. They're also exceptions because they're not the most common reasons why people are getting divorced today. In our culture, and too often in the church with us being downstream of culture, people use excuses. They say that they need to get divorced because they're not being fulfilled. Because they and their husband and wife, or wife, uh, have goals that are way too different hopes for life, and desires that they cannot meet together. And the most common one, of course, is just that they've fallen out of love, that they don't have that emotional attachment to that person, that desire for them anymore, and so they shouldn't have to be married anymore. And so this is what raises the other issue from the question, is happiness itself. And happiness, we need to know, 
and this is maybe going to feel a little controversial, a little weird, but happiness is not God's goal for us. Now, I'm not saying that God's goal for us is that we be unhappy either. I'm saying that happiness is not a priority. It's not supposed to be, and that's because happiness is way too dependent on circumstances. Uh, think about it this way. It's a hot summer's day, and you go out, you grab an ice cream cone, and you sit down on a park bench to enjoy it. That's probably going to make you feel happy. Now, conversely, say while you're on that park bench that a sudden thunderstorm springs up and dumps a ton of water on you. More than likely, that's going to make you unhappy. Does that happiness or unhappiness in those circumstances have anything to do with whether the situation is actually good or bad? It doesn't, necessarily. Because if that's your 8th or ninth ice cream cone that day, probably not a good thing. Or if your area has been going through a drought for months, then that rain's probably not a bad thing. Your perception is not the highest good. Our perception is not what comes first. God knows that. He knows that and he wants joy in this case. It's most closely associated with happiness. He wants joy to come first because joy is a virtue that's above circumstances. Joy is the comfort of knowing that we are known by and belong to God. And happiness can come from that. But joy is also there even in those moments where happiness is not present. Because it doesn't depend on circumstances. It depends on God. And it's better than fleeting feelings. And it's also better than feelings that are not always necessarily selfish, but are always self-centered. Happiness is about you. Happiness is about your experience, but joy is about shared experience. That's the other reason why it's greater, and that's where happiness and divorce tie together, and where we need to be careful not to misconstrue God's will for marriage and for joy, is that marriage is not supposed to be about the individual. Your marriage is not about you, singular, your marriage is about you, plural. Your marriage is about the relationship that you together are supposed to seek mutual good, that you are supposed to work together to find better things in life, not just happiness. It's about fortitude. It's about sticking with it rather than about feelings. Now, the other thing to be very careful about is using God as an excuse, as this question points out that people do, and as I've heard people do, and as you probably have as well, is that, as we've already discussed, God nowhere in the Bible says that it's okay for you to get divorced. It's okay for someone to get divorced because it'll make them happy. That's not written there. What we've seen is that the basically the opposite is written there, is that God hates divorce. And he doesn't want anyone to do it because he has a purpose that's higher than just feelings. And so if you are saying, and again, that's maybe too personalizing it, but if someone is saying that divorce is a good thing for them because God wants them to be happy, but we know that God is not actually saying that, then all they're seeking is to justify themselves. And whether they know it or not, they are worshiping themselves. Because the God that they're talking about is not the one true God. The God they're talking about is their own desires. It's their own heart. That's who's speaking. It's idolatry. What they really need to do is put that idol out of their hearts and allow God back into the proper place so that they can see what marriage and what life are really supposed to be about. Now, I do recognize in saying all of this that it's maybe placing a heavy burden. I know that divorce happens. I know that marriage is hard. And so I'm not saying that it's going to be easy to know these things or to apply them. I'm also not saying that if you have been divorced, that you should go reconcile with your former spouse, which might also mean leaving a current one. You know, that's not helping the situation. I'm just saying that we need to recognize the truth. I'm saying that we need to know that divorce is wrong. We need to know that this is not God's purpose. And so it, it requires forgiveness. It's something that there needs to be forgiveness for. It's not just as easy as saying God wants me to be happy and then that makes everything okay. What makes things right, what restores 
the proper relationship with God is not you justifying yourself. It's the blood of Christ. That that's the price that was paid in order to bring forgiveness for this. Divorce is very costly, but that's the biggest cost involved. And we have to know that. We have to take marriage and divorce more seriously than we do in our culture. People who have been through it need to know it just so they know where they stand with God. The churches need to know it because we need to be really not sweeping this under the rug the way that we do all too often. It, it cannot be used to tear people down, but it at least needs to be seen for what it is. And for people who are married, they need to know it because divorce should come off the table. It shouldn't be an option. When you know how serious it is, then you're more likely to treat your marriage more seriously, which is going to make it healthier in the long run because it'll be able to pursue what God actually has in store for it rather than something so nearly meaningless as happiness. And as far as the lesson for all of us, that's where happiness is concerned, is just remembering that that's not what's supposed to come first. God has better things in mind for us. He wants better things for us. So we should too. Our culture is all about the pursuit of happiness, but it's really been misunderstood, and we need to put things in their proper place. And hopefully some of the things I've said here will help you to do that. Uh, if you have any questions about the Bible yourself or about God, I'd be more than happy to hear from you. Uh, there's some ways that you can reach me in the description below. I would recommend maybe the email address because that way you can be sure I'm the only one who's seeing it. Maybe if you're concerned about putting something on Twitter or Facebook, whether you're not sure how to frame your question or you just want, don't want your name out there, I'm very happy to help you phrase it. And I keep the questions anonymous by default, actually. Uh, if you want a shout out, you actually can let me know that. I'll do that in that case. But otherwise, I just don't use names. I don't feel like that is the best way to, to handle that. Uh, I think I may have in the past, but I don't do that anymore uh, because they can be pretty sensitive. And I appreciate that and, uh, and appreciate getting the questions. So I want to make it as easy for people as possible. So if you do have that, uh, please go ahead and feel free to share that. And for everybody else also, if you're willing to uh, leave a thumbs up on this video, subscribe to the channel. That will be a, a great way to help me out as I continue to try to grow this ministry. But until next time, keep looking up.